You know, people will always show you what goes great. When it comes to freeze plugs on a V8, what do you find on the web? People's installations of freeze plugs. Hardly anyone films extracting, but a, a few guys have. But it doesn't really show you the, the problems that you can have. Now, old freeze plugs seem to do what they're supposed to do. And that is turning the hole so you can grab them. But in this case, our target test motor, we had new ones put in when it went to get cleaned, but nothing else was done. We went to build it, oh no. What in the hell is in the number five hole? Famously referred to as phlegmoid. Anyway, fast forward, now it's on its way back to the machine shop but we've deburred everything. We've tapped holes in the front. Galley plugs, tap the lifter galley drain backs under the intake manifold. More on that later. Ground and blended the drain back holes at, at the back in front of the block. You know, the block is filthy. It's filthy. So the freeze plugs, new or not, have to be removed. Let's see what we got. If this happens to you, it's not the end of the world. Get the freeze plug so it looks like this and remove it. Some of them are going to look better than others. Oh. That's nasty. But the point is, it's out. After you get the cam bearings out, you gotta knock out the back freeze plug. Just get you a, a pipe, you know, tubing. We have pieces of tubing with a seam here, 1.750 by 33 inches long. And knock that back plug out of there. That isn't the twilight zone between the rear freeze plugs there. It's a cam tunnel with the rear cam plug removed that we used our one and three quarter inch diameter by 33 inch long piece of tubing. You'll have to take the block off the engine stand and put it on something to get the rear freeze plugs out. Picking the engine up with the cherry picker engine and all. Remove the engine stand handle, pull the stand off the head, and then put it on your bench or whatever you're going to place it on. It's a good time to service and grease the head and tighten any loose bolts and nuts. Now all the freeze plugs are out. After checking the crank for straight, I like to check the cam journal to cam bearing clearance and the lifter bore diameter. As you know, 842 thou is the diameter of a small block Chevy lifter, and the allowance is 0 .0015. In other words, a thou and a half. I measured these and I got 0 .8429, 0 .8434, and 0.8442. The limit would be 0.8435. Now, if you're over 0.8435, you can rebore the lifter holes for Ford lifters, which are 0.875. You don't have to throw away your block. My cam bearing clearance was 0.0025.
two and a half thou on the high side but tolerable uh, I, th I think these measurements are telling me that uh, crap oil was in this engine we'll see so because it only had 50,000 on it seems to be some wear but we'll see if uh, new cam bearings don't tighten up that two and a half thou I hope it does the standard is uh, one thou for each inch of shaft at least in the racers world sometimes a loosey-goosey fit in the cam bearings um, you know it, it affects oil pressure adversely too loose makes it drop off but we'll get it dialed in The lifter galley holes are along the axis of this rod. They are 725 thou down the lifter bore. So you're going to have to measure them at 90 degrees to the rod axis, like the screwdriver is positioned. Using our dial bore gauge, out of all the lifter bores, none were over 8.8435. That limit is the diameter of a small block Chevy lifter. That's 0.842 plus a thou and a half clearance, equaling 0.8435. So that's good news. We'll have the machine shop check it behind us so we're sure. But I think it's a go. One of the measurements I like to get before the engine goes to the machine shop uh, is the rod side clearance. These pistons are 30 over and the block is not. So this uh, we'll do in a pinch. Our measurement is 21 thou rod side clearance. Now, most of this stuff is old hat to a lot of you. But there are always new people with a thirst for facts and uh, you know you're gonna have a ton of specs and parts and tools or not maybe you're the the individual who doesn't have an abundance of cash or maybe it's your first motor build some of these things we touched on maybe have helped you if we help one guy or gal I guess you know, I think that's the name of the game. Uh, sometimes you know the theory, but I've never had someone take the time to show you how. But with the whip, there's a ton of information out there. And no reason why you can't get the right info. Uh, putting it into practice can be a nervous time. And somebody always has a Gen 1 laying around, but if it's your first time, you know, it's kind of nerve-wracking. But hopefully, you get what you need, and you make the decision, and you go for it. Gen 1's, it's a great motor to cut your teeth on, shall we say. It's a lot of work building a motor, but when she fires up, that's when it's all worth it. That's when you smile and feel a great sense of accomplishment.